The Log Cabin Quilt Block is a traditional favorite. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to make this version of Log Cabin Block and give you lots of ideas for how to use it in a quilt. Welcome to EBITDA Studio. My name is Elizabeth, and I help you make beautiful things with quilting, pojagi, and embroidery. So the Log Cabin Quilt Block is a traditional favorite that's been around for a long time. It consists of a square in the middle and then bars that go around the center square. Traditionally, it's made with one color on one corner and then another color on the opposite corner, but there are a lot of different variations to this. So today I'm gonna to show you how to make this version of the traditional block and then give you lots of ideas for using it in the quilt. So the block I'm doing today is a two fabric block. It just has this orange and yellow fabric. But of course, you can use whatever combination of fabrics you want. A really popular option is to have a two color block, but use scrappy fabrics. So the block I'm making is a 12 inch finished block and one and a half inch finished bars that go around the center square. So for this, with your two colors, you're gonna need your center square, which is three and a half inches square. And then from the other color, you'll need a strip that is two inches by three and a half inches. Then from both colors, you're gonna need strips and all these strips are two inches wide, but you're gonna need a five inch length, a six and a half inch length, an eight inch length, nine and a half inch length, 11 inch. And then from color one, the same color as your center square, you're gonna need a 12 and a half inch strip. So once you have all these pieces cut out, then it's gonna be time to assemble them together. So begin with the center square and then take the pieces the same length and you're gonna sew those together with a quarter inch seam allowance. And then once those are sewn together, then you will take your color two five inch strip and you will sew that onto the side. If you lay out the pieces first, just to see how it's gonna look, you might notice that it doesn't seem like they're gonna line up and you might panic a little bit. But don't worry, that's just because these haven't been sewn and so they still have the seam allowances in them. Once you've sewn these together, then they will be the correct size to go together. So when you join these two together, the piece that you end up with should be five inches long, and then it will match up with the five inch piece perfectly. If it is slightly too small or slightly too large, take a minute and it just adjust your seam allowance to make it bigger or smaller, just so that <clears throat> then you'll get the right size. And if you take a minute to do this right in the first couple seams in your block, that will just help everything else go together better. So once we've joined these two, we'll join our color two five inch piece. Then we have our color one five inch piece that will go in here. And then moving around, we will have our six and a half inch color two piece. To help remember to put the right strips on the right sides, you'll remember that um, one corner is gonna be one color and the opposite corner is gonna be the other color. So that will help keep everything straight. So once you have those pieces together, it's gonna to look like this. Now for pressing, press all the seams away from the center square. So everything you're adding is pressed away from the center square, regardless of color. Pressing the seams this way will help eliminate some of the bulk that would happen if you're pressing a seam onto itself. So once we've done the first rotation around the square, we'll just continue along. So we would continue with the two of color two and then back to color one. And we would just continue to work that way until we get to our last strip, which is going to be the last strip with just one 12 and a half inch color one strip. So here's the finished block we can see that this was our last strip to go on and it goes the whole width of the block to make 
a 12 and a half inch block that will finish at 12 inches in a quilt. Now in this block, I've added my bars on counterclockwise. There's no reason why you couldn't add them on clockwise. Just try and keep it consistent for all the blocks in the same quilt, and then that will have a uniform feel to it. If you like the Log Cabin Quilt Block, then you will like my little workbook, the Log Cabin Inspiration. This workbook has a tutorial for making the block in a bunch of different sizes, so it doesn't have to be a 12 inch block. And it also has some quilt inspiration. So some of these are traditional layouts that you're probably familiar with, but it has a bunch of other interesting things like using log cabin blocks with alternate plane blocks or with sashing, even in groups of four or blocks on point. So there's a lot of really different and unusual ways to use the log cabin block. So below you'll find the links to get the Log Cabin Inspiration Workbook and also a written tutorial for the Log Cabin Block. So you can just double check all the measurements and it explains how to make this block in different sizes. This as well as inspiration for other traditional quilt blocks, quadragi and embroidery can be found at my website, evidastudio.com.